samudra manthan or the churning of the ocean is one unique occasion when the devas and their enemies the asuras unite for an important reason the churning of the ocean was a result of a curse by sage durvasa once he offered a garland to indra the king of devas indra accepted the garland and showed his happiness putting the garland on his elephant airavat as an ornament airavat irritated by the scent of the garland picked it with his trunk and threw it on the ground durvasa was furious and cursed indra and the devas to lose their kingdom power and glory as a result indra's mighty vahana instantly went into oblivion lakshmi the goddess of fortune could no longer stay in the same realm as the devas and parted ways with her consort vishnu she made depths of shri sagar her new home due to lakshmi's absence in devalok the devas lost all their riches the luminous chandra adorning shiva's matted hair disappeared too robbed of their power the devas were soon defeated by the asuras in battle the defeated devas approached lord vishnu for a solution who advised them to churn shir sagar to obtain the amrit amrit or the elixir of immortality would help the devas regain their power the asuras willingly offered to assist the devas since they too wanted immortality and invincible powers by consuming amrit mount mandar was used to churn the ocean which was kept afloat in the ocean by kurma vishnu turtle avatar the naga king vasuki who shiva wears as a garland became the churning rope several precious items or ratnas emerged from the cosmic ocean which were distributed amongst the devas the asuras and the sages halahal the halahal was a deadly poison that had the potential to destroy all beings in the three realms none amongst the armies of the asuras and the devas stepped in to stop the poison from spreading into the universe as they feared the poison would destroy them too lord shiva descended from mount kailash to consume the poison goddess parvati shiva's consort used her powers to stop the halahal in shiva's throat and as a result his throat turned blue thus he came to be known as nilkant airavat Airavat, the king of the elephants, was a white-colored winged being with six trunks and six pairs of tusks. He is said to dig his trunk deep into the ground and reach water which is inaccessible to humans. He uses his trunk to spray the water in the form of monsoon showers. After appearing from the cosmic ocean, Airavat chose to serve his master Indra, who was delighted to reunite with his loyal Vahana. Ucheshravas often considered as the king of the horses the seven-headed snow-white horse was one of the three animals that appeared during the samudra manthan the magnificent steed was taken by indra eventually ucheshravas came into the hands of king mahabali the asura king who ruled over the three worlds once goddess lakshmi was spellbound by the beauty of ucheshravas and forgot to pay attention to her consort vishnu this infuriated him and he cursed lakshmi to be born as a mare the color of ucheshrava's tail once became a topic of debate for two sisters kadru and vinata the sister studied the horse from a distance and vinata declared that the horse's tail was white while kadru insisted that the tail was black the sisters decided to come back and see the horse the next day Whoever of the two had guessed the wrong color would have to become the slave of the other. Kadru won the bet by treachery as she commanded her sons the Nagas to cover the tail of the horse. Thus Vinata ended up being Kadru's slave. Kamadhenu Kamadhenu was one of the precious ratnas obtained from the cosmic ocean and is considered to be the mother of all cattle. Kamadhenu is depicted with the face of a woman. the body of a cow with a pair of wings and a tail of a peacock she was given to the saptarishis as she provided them with ample milk the milk was used to prepare curd and ghee which were regularly required for their sacred rituals according to mahabharat kamadhenu was in the possession of one of the saptarishis jamadagni 
the sage invited King Kartavirya Arjuna to a feast. The greedy king learnt about the resourcefulness of Kamadhenu and forcefully took Kamadhenu and her calf away from the sage. The sage's son Parshuram, the sixth avatar or incarnation of Vishnu, single-handedly defeated the king and his army, successfully retrieving the sacred cow and her calf. Apsaras Apsaras are female heavenly spirits of the Devaloka or the home of the gods. They are associated with music and dance. After appearing from the cosmic ocean, they chose Gandharvas as their companions. The Gandharvas served as musicians in the Indra's court. Indra, who was constantly insecure about his throne, often commanded the enchanting Apsaras to distract sages or Asuras from their tapasya to achieve his own ends. Parijat From the depths of the ocean sprung a divine flowering tree called the Parijat. The flowers of the tree were white, with a tinge of orange at the stalk. Indra decided to keep the beautiful flowering tree with the enchanting fragrance for himself and planted the tree in his garden in Devalok. Yugas later, Krishna and Indra dwelled over the tree. As Krishna wanted to bring the tree bearing the scented flowers to Prithvi Lok for his wife Satyabhama and Rukmini. Eventually, Krishna defeated Indra and took the tree. The tree has a special significance in Hinduism and it is forbidden to pluck its flowers and only the fallen flowers can be used to worship deities. Vishnu's Bow Sharang The Sharang was one of the two divine bows crafted by Vishwakarma, the architect of the gods. Vishnu used the bow in his Parashurama avatar, Ram avatar and Krishna avatar. Before returning back to his holy abode, Vishnu in the form of Krishna left the bow in the possession of Varuna, the god of the oceans. The conch Panchajanya In ancient times, the sound of the conch signified the beginning of a war. Vishnu's conch Panchajanya is a symbolic way of portraying his role as the preserver of the universe. God steps into the battlefield again and again in different avatars to save humanity. Kastubmani Kastubmani is a sacred precious gemstone that is embedded in a necklace worn by Vishnu. The gemstone is said to be as beautiful as an exotic lotus and as radiant as the sun. Chandra The moon god Chandra appeared as one of the precious ratnas and took refuge in the matted hair of Shiva. His father-in-law, Prajapati Daksh, once cursed him for not being a good husband to his daughters. Due to the curse, Chandra lost his powers and his body started withering. After extensive prayers, Shiva came to the deity's rescue and wore him as an ornament in his hair to neutralize the curse. However, Chandra still waxes and wanes as a result of that curse. Lakshmi Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, prosperity and fortune. She is one of the three supreme goddesses with Saraswati and Parvati. She emerged from the cosmic ocean draped in her red and gold sari while seated on a grand lotus with smaller lotuses in her hands. After a long time of separation, the goddess was finally reunited with her consort Lord Vishnu. Her return brought back the riches of the Devas, giving Devalok its earlier splendor. Alakshmi The arrival of Lakshmi was followed by her counterpart and elder sister Alakshmi, who had unkempt hair and was draped in a single white cloth. She is the goddess of misfortune, poverty and misery and is said to visit houses filled with ego, pride, selfishness and envy. Unlike her sister Lakshmi, who likes sweet food, Alakshmi has an appetite for hot, sour and pungent food. So many Hindu households often hang lemon and chilies at their doorstep to satisfy the appetite of the goddess of misfortune. Dhanvantari Dhanavantri, the physician of the gods, appeared from the turbulent ocean, carrying the pot of Amrit. Dhanavantri was responsible for teaching the ancient knowledge of medical science, Ayurveda, to the mortals. Brahma created Ayurveda before he created mankind, but the vast knowledge of the medical science was difficult for mortals to understand. So Dhanavantri split the original text into eight divisions and taught his disciples. Amrit 
As soon as Dhanvantri appeared with the pot of Amrit, the Asura snatched the pot and planned to consume the entire pot of elixir. Vishnu devised a plan and took the form of an enchanting woman, Mohini. Mohini used her charm to lure the Asuras out of hiding and used the opportunity to take the pot back to the Devas.